Hey everyone and welcome back to Battleborn. I've got a new build for you. This one is for Shane and Orox and I call it Demon Drop. Now this guide is going to be a little bit different than other guides that I've made because I find Shane to be a very versatile character in terms of her helix and uh, I like to make different choices on the helix based on how a match is playing out or uh, the characters that I'm going against. So normally with a character, I'll have a set of Helix options that I pick that I find that it just outshines all the other options. But with Shane, that's not really the case. I find that many different setups with her don't really outshine the others. They're all sort of on an equal playing field. So I like to set her up uh, for the current situation however I think will work out best. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you all of the different Helix choices I may make and the reasons that I may make them. But uh, normally, uh, once you're done building her up, she's gonna operate in one of three play styles. And that's either gonna be a ranged, focused character that does a lot of ranged damage and then stealths in to finish off low HP characters. You can build her to be really tanky and go in and just sort of soak up damage and disrupt, just be mayhem on the other team. Or you can kind of build her in the typical DPS, like, high damage character, just go in and get the kill, or get someone to run away. So, if this sounds like your type of character, your type of build, let's jump to the helix, and I'll show you how to set this up. Okay, so for level 1, we are going to go to the right with Welcome Committee. That's going to give us an overshield whenever we successfully use Fetch. Level 2, we are going to the left with Wait for the Drop. That's going to add a 3 second slow duration to anyone hit by our stealth strike. Alright, so for level 3, I can go with any of these 3 options. I like all of them. Uh, if you go to the left with Boomerang Bounce, that's going to turn you more into a range focused character. That goes in for the sort of assassin-like kills. If you go up the middle with the power of 2, that's going to increase your melee attacks by 18% whenever your shield is active. That's going to make you more of a standard DPS uh, high damage character. And if you go to the right with Hulk out with your Dijon out, that's going to increase your shield recharge per second. And that's going to make you more of a tanky character. Uh, because uh, later on in the Helix, whenever we use a skill, it's going to cause our shields to recharge. And with that super ridiculously high shield recharge rate, you're going to get your shields back super fast. Okay, so for level 4... Uh, I like uh, two of these options. So uh, if you want to go up the middle with we'll take everything, that's if you want to keep fetch as a pool, which is really good when a match is uh, sort of turning into a choke point battle. So both teams are kind of behind the choke point, just kind of taking shots at, it, at one another, and that can really disrupt everything. You can just grab a bunch of players and just suck them into something really nasty. So that's really good. Um, for games that don't turn into choke point battles, I usually go to the right with holding it down, which is going to turn your fetch into a two-second stun rather than a pull. Uh, and I find the stun to be incredibly useful. So unless I'm in a choke point battle, I'm usually going to the right with the stun. Okay, so for level 5, we're going to the left with the Immortal Aegis. That makes it so whenever we use any skill, it causes our shields to recharge. And one thing that took me a little while to figure out, uh, that shield recharge uh, doesn't activate on shield uh, stealth strike until you actually come out of stealth and do the strike. And then the shields will recharge. So if just activating the stealth isn't going to cause your shields to come back. Okay, level 6. We're going to the left with Sneaky and Resilient. Uh, that's going to give us 20% damage reduction when we're stealth. Neither of these options is really good. If you really want to, you can go to the right with Shield Smasher. Um, but I don't know why you'd really be fighting someone who has their shields up, or using Fetch on someone that has their shields up. You usually use it for someone trying to get away. Uh, unless you kept it as a pool, and then I could see it being more useful, but... Take either of these, really, but I always go to the left. Okay, so for level 7, uh, I'd like to take two different options here. Uh, if I went with the, um, the bouncing boomerangs earlier in the helix, I'll usually go with boom goes the boomerang, which is going to increase my damage uh, on the boomerang. Sometimes I'll take that damage increase 
anyway, but usually not unless I have the bouncing boomerangs. In all other situations, I like the bigger batter Dijon on the right, which just is a straight 240 uh, increase to your maximum shield strength. All right, level eight. We're going to the left with sustained stealth. It's gonna add six seconds to your stealth strike. That lets you do a whole lot of things. Sneak into a base, do a stealth strike on someone who has no idea you're coming because you activated it way out of sight, or uh, help you get away. It's great for uh, escaping. All right, level nine. We're going to the left with quite fetching. Uh, and that's going to decrease our cooldown time on fetch by 20%. All right, level 10. We're going to the right with Orox Beckons. Uh, and that makes it so when tag team is activated, uh, Orox pulls people in and slows them. So before this, the ult, it has uses, but uh, it's mostly just for area denial. Once you get level 10, it turns into a really nasty ability. All right, so that's how I set up my Helix and the different choices I may make based on, you know, the match and the characters I'm going against. So uh, let me show you my gear. This gear does not change. I like it in all situations. And uh, this should be very familiar to you guys. It's my usual set. So I've got the Survivor's Regrowth Serum, 7 health regen per second, extra 4.2 if I live for 3 minutes. The Eviscerating Endoskeletal Graft for attack damage and attack speed. And the Vow of Zealous Fury from Rendane, attack speed, uh, critical hit damage, and stacking attack speed whenever I use a skill. And uh, let's see, what did I put that other set? I forgot to rename it um, for uh, the different character. Uh, but this is the one I usually go with. It's the same one I use for Montana. Um, so sorry, this set up here is what I use for Incursion and Meltdown. It's my expensive set. If I'm going into capture, I usually use this set right here. So the first item is this artificial Vitae, 7 health regen per second. The second item is this hurricane, which adds attack speed. And the third item is this erratic internal capacitor, which adds uh, 140 maximum shield strength at the cost of reduced reload speed, which doesn't affect Shane. So this is just a free boost uh, for no cost. So that's the uh, items I like to go with, and uh, those are the Helix choices that I make. So uh, let's jump to some clips, and I'll explain to you how the level progression works with this build. Level 1, I am completely on assist duty and minion killing. Shane's got a large shield, so she can definitely go in and take some hits, but she's almost impossible to miss because of how large Aurox is, and you don't really have any tricks yet. I almost always just stand back and throw out my boomerangs and mostly mind my own business. If someone on the other team gets themselves low, then I'll stealth strike over with a follow-up fetch to try and finish the job, but I'm mostly just trying to level up as quickly as possible. Level 2 snags you the slow on your stealth strike, and now you can put the hurt on people. You can either initiate with stealth strike to catch people off guard and put in a ton of damage while they try to figure out what's going on, or you can simply run up to them or flank them and save the stealth strike for when they try to run away. I usually like to initiate with stealth strike and I save the fetch for when they try to run. Level 3 is going to depend on the option you took in your helix. If you took bouncing boomerangs then just settle in and enjoy your wave clearing and chipping away at enemy health. If they get low then stealth in for the kill, but otherwise just stay back. If you took the increased melee damage when your shields are up, then start initiating players and racking up those kills. If you went with the increased shield recharge, then continue business as normal. You've still got some levels you need to gain before your playstyle changes. Level 4 is decision time again. You either boost your fetch to grab everything in its path, or you switch out the pool for a 2 second stun. If you stick with the pool, then just look for opportunities to drag people into stuff. Fellow teammate ultimates, Oscar Mike grenades, thorn blights, all of that stuff is good. Whatever you, bad stuff you can drag them into is perfect. You, can, uh, you can't just grab people to get them over to your side too. That's always good. If you went with the stun, then just use it like any other stun. Throw it out whenever you think it will be useful, such as stopping a runner, preventing a shield character from blocking, saving an ally, or just to cover and escape. 
Level 5 is a big level, especially if you went with the shield recharge at level 3. Every skill you use will begin recharging your shield, which is useful for any Shane setup, but incredibly good with the super high shield recharge rate, and can turn you into a huge damage sponge if used well. In addition to your helix, you pick up your ultimate. The ultimate is great to drop on sentries and incursion or choke points on any mode. It's also incredibly useful when going against the melee character because you can drop the ult and force them to fight you in it and take a ton of damage or force them away while you pelt them with boomerangs. Don't forget, it causes your shields to recharge too, so it's an extra skill to initiate the shields. The ult is also great when you're uh, escaping to drop in front of you, forcing the chaser to back off or run through it. Level 6 is mostly irrelevant, but I suppose every little bit helps. You get the 20% damage reduction while you're cloaked by Stealth Strike, but chances are pretty good you're not taking any damage at all while you're cloaked. The only time this one comes in handy for me is when I'm using the cloak to escape, but the enemy has managed to track me while I'm cloaked. That damage reduction has probably saved me a few times, but it's very rarely useful. Uh, but hey, if it's gonna save me once out of every 20 games, I'll take it. Level 7 is either going to get you increased boomerang damage or increased maximum shields. If you've got the bouncing boomerangs with all of the attack speed from the gear up, then you can do some serious damage with those boomerangs, and the bouncing means you can kill people hiding behind walls by smacking a player or minion near them. It's gotta be infuriating whenever that happens. At the very least, the bouncing picks me up a crazy amount of assists, and sometimes it gets me a lot of kills. The shields are useful for any setup, so it should be pretty obvious why that's a huge boon, especially if you went with the increased shield recharge rate at level 3. If you can get your maximum shield all the way back up, that's fantastic. Level 8 increases your stealth duration by 6 seconds, which is a massive increase. You can basically stealth where you want now. You can sneak into the enemy's base and take out all of their buildables, you could stealth all the way back to that pesky Toby or Marquis that's been harassing you all game, or you can simply use it as an improvement to your escape capabilities by getting you out of sticky situations, assuming they can't track you while you're cloaked. What I find works really well for me with the increased duration is delaying a stealth strike. If I've got teammates coming in a couple seconds, I can delay exiting stealth and initiating the strike to coordinate my damage with them and overwhelm a target quickly. Whereas before I had a small window of opportunity I had to operate under. Those 6 seconds feel like a lifetime when you're in them. Level 9 decreases the cooldown on fetch, which means more fetches, more overshields, and more opportunities to get your shields back. If you went with the stun too, then fetch is your single best way to get shields back, because if it's a 1v1, then they have no way of preventing at least 2 seconds of that shield regen. And that's a lot of shields. Level 10 causes your ult to pull people in and slows them, which completely changes its uses and turns it into a really nasty ability for killing enemy players. The damage on the ult is pretty good, and getting pulled in and slowed ensures they're going to take at least a little bit of that damage. If you time it right too, and the ultimate ends, you can follow up with another slow and big hit from Stealth Strike, followed up with a fetch if necessary. Well there you have it, the demon drop build for Shane and Orox. I know this one is basically 3 builds in one, but you should be putting them all to use at some point if you want to be relevant in any given match. I hope you guys enjoy the build, and let me know how it works out for you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.